I've been hunting elk since 2016, which puts me at 16 years. Out of 16 years, I've killed 15 elk. Two of them cows and the rest of them bulls. How, how was I that successful? Grinding out, learning it on my own, self-taught, right? Everything's on YouTube. You can honestly teach yourself exactly what to do from YouTube. And everybody asks me, how did you learn how to call? YouTube. Honestly, uh, back then it was DVDs and it was, it was Primo's calls, uh, the truth about hunting. I mean, I promise you, I blew my wife's ears out doing that, right? And it drove her crazy. Before he was even alive, there's not no stickers. Well, whoever doesn't get a sticker, then I'll, I'll send them a sticker first, okay? Okay, so just pass, pass what you got out. If you didn't get a sticker, I think we got enough diet for it. If you didn't get a sticker, just come see me later, um, and then we'll send it to you in the mail, all right? Um, so I blew, I blew my wife's ears out from 2000, the end of 2005 when I started teaching myself how to call to 2006, and I promise you, I didn't really know how to blow a dive frame that good, but where I did cut my teeth on is open reads, and I'll explain those today. So for some of y'all that, you know, you just can't get a dive frame, and you can't, you know, you just can't figure it out, I promise you, I called in so many help using open reads. And I'll explain these two easy extra uh, calls from Phelps. Listen, I'm, I'm a part of the team from Phelps, and, and I, I, I love their calls. Right out of package, it's easy to blow. But by all means, if, if you like Rocky Mountain Elk calls, and you think they're a little easier, I'm not telling you to go with any other company. You pick what, which diaphragm works for you, and you rock and roll with that. But what I am teaching you today is the basic calls that you need to execute during that September month when that rut is going on, okay? Um, so let's go around the horn. Like I said, I think I, I'm enough about me. Let's go around the horn and just tell me your name, where you're from, and uh, if you have any years of elk hunting, how many elk have you killed? So, uh, I'm Michael. I'm from like South Spring, Fort Carson, and I have exactly zero years of elk hunting. So, this class is offered to us from like, here in the better group. Um, David Becker, uh, Team Washington Pro Staff. I have been elk hunting for two years, have not killed an elk yet. Um, successful in other classes, deer, bear, what have you. Um, about it. Name's Cole, uh, I'm from Michigan. Zero experience elk hunting, experience out there, anything else, just not a lot. My name's Rob, I'm from New Jersey. Uh, one season elk hunting, zero success. One season? One season. Okay. Zero success, but it's an adventure. It's enjoyable. Absolutely. My name is Laura. Um, I live in Fort Collins. I attempted. I got an elk tag for a cow elk tag last uh, season, and just kind of went on Onyx, walked around, found mm -hmm. three bulls, but of course I had a cow tag, and uh, that's my experience. Was that during September or during the rifle season? It was rifle. Rifle season. What, what, what season? First, second, or third? Oh, third. Third. Mm -hmm. Were they still calling? No. They wasn't they calling. Didn't anything else. Really? Mm -hmm. Tell you a story later. Uh, Clint Ryan. Bass from uh, Alabama. I lived out here at Fort Carson, been here for a few years, or just, or just got back zero experience elk hunting. Zero. So we got maybe about three years of elk hunting here. Go ahead. Uh, my name's Brendan. I'm from Michigan, and I'm brand new to elk hunting as well. Sweet. I love brand new. My name's Darren. I'm also from Michigan, and this will be my second year going on. Sweet. Any success? No. Any call ins? <laughs> No. Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Brian, I'm from Texas. No experience in hunting. No experience in hunting? No, no, with uh, elk. Sorry. With elk hunting, yeah. With other experience though, right? Yes. yes. Okay, sweet. Hey. And no, no, no years of elk hunting at all? No, no, no. Okay. Hey, uh, live here in Colorado at Montrose now, from Kansas originally. Uh, elk hunting, uh, third season, a couple years ago, one elk. Uh, Fired around to get the table bed out with a service dog, blew my chance in the next season. Never, never again on that. Wow, wow. Yeah, I don't want to hear some more about that. Right here. Uh, James grew up in the South, hunting white elk for the majority of the last 20 years. Uh, two seasons elk hunting in Washington State, just no luck. Okay. You and my name is John Captain. All right. I'm Doug, my name is Doug. Uh, from Florida, zero experience elk hunting. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. That's okay. That's fun. Uh -huh. I am Blake from Texas. I've hunted deer every year if got the chance. Uh, so I so far. No, no experience with elk hunting as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, Alex I'm from Michigan. Um, zero experience with elk hunting. Sweet. I love Brandon. This is going to be a good My name is David. Uh, I've been hunting elk for five 
here. So I got four out in Upper Kansas. Uh, archery rifle? Uh, archery and rifle and one month away. Okay, okay. So so you guys experienced during the rally? Yeah. Any but to be fair, I, I used it on private land. So <laughs> Oh, oh, he's met a private lady now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm from Topeka, Kansas. Uh, is your experience all right? Okay. Uh, I'm Annie from Northwest Arizona. Been out now for the past few seasons, so it's cool. Nice. Call in during our trip? Yeah. <clears throat> Sweet. That's what I like to hear. So, uh, you know, you, you, you heard from me, but my name is Jermaine Hodge. I'm uh, originally from North Carolina. I started hunting elk in 2006 to now, and uh, had the opportunity to, uh, in 2019, my buddy Pat Latrell back here, who, who's number three in the world uh, last year, elk calling. Um, we had the opportunity to get pushed by him to, to go and compete. And then uh, in 2019, I made my first stage appearance. Um, kind of funny story, you know, Started in Colorado Springs, won this competition, and uh, Tom Giesman, he was a uh, host of that that competition. It was at a it was at a rifle show or something slash expo. I won that competition, and then I went on to uh, Salt Lake City where where big boys are, and it was a regionals, and got stomped in. I'm gonna tell you right now, it was like 32 people in that bracket, and all of them could call. Right? I mean. I, I would say all on the call. I, got, I think I ended up 14th out of 32. I was like, Jesus, I need to work on some stuff. But I went out there and did my, my best rendition of me being in the woods. But that wasn't enough because stage calling and, and being in the woods is totally different, right? So I went back for the next month and I said, I don't take losing lightly at all, especially in the elk woods. If, if the elk fools me, I'm coming back against don't you. I promise you that. And uh, so I went on to uh, I went on to world championships. And I went in there with the expectation that I just need to take out two people and I will be happy, right? If I win two, two matches, I'll be happy. They kind of changed the format where it's head to head. So you have two people on the stage and then they, you know, pull out a call of the, out of the hat and they, you have to do your best at that call. There's seven judges. They don't get to see you. They're behind the stage. All they do is hear you, right? So they don't know who you are. Um, and I went out there and I took down the first one. I said, yeah, cool. Took down the second one and then I was like, I think I might, get, might be in the mix of this. And then I went on and the uh, next day I, I made it to the semis. And if you make it to the semis, then you're automatically going to be top four. And then you got to go on to the next day, right? So the next day I show up and I said, well, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just keeping the way, the way it was the first day. Went out there, next thing you know, I'm in the final. I said, well, Hey, I'm coming away with one or two. We'll just see how this goes. And I ended up winning the 2019 World Championships in the men's division. Was it hard? It was completely hard. Was it nerve wracking? It was really nerve wracking. My guts were in the floor. My heart was pounding through my chest. It almost felt like I was in the elk woods, right? But at the same time, I got to meet a lot of good people. And I also had a lot of respect for the guys that were there in that bracket. They were all amazing, all amazing. Would I take any of them elk hunting? Heck yeah, I'd take any of them elk call for me too. So. Um, last year, I competed in the professional division, which was the first time for me being in the professional division. And these are big boys, boys you see on TV. You know, these guys know exactly what they do. They, they have years, probably two times as much years I have in the elk woods. And I went out there and competed with them. And I said, well, if I break in the top four, I would be very happy. Ended up losing right before uh, medal rounds. So we ended up right around top six out of Right, 30, 30 people, which wasn't bad for me being in the division, uh, uh, professional division. These guys are really good. Um, so I wrote down a few things, and, and just so I don't make, mix, miss anything during this uh, this little seminar. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I wrote it down this morning on the fly, right? So uh, we did our intros, and we got to meet everybody. And you can you can tell we got different drivers from different places of Arizona all the way back to the East Coast. Uh, today, what I'm going to talk about is, first thing is cow sounds, mastering the basics of cow sounds. So we'll go into cow mews, uh, calf mews, lost calf sounds, and estrus buzz. And I say estrus buzz, it's just an extra scream, and it goes into a little wavy note, right? 
And that's a little bit more advanced call, and we'll touch base on it, but later on I'll uh, rinse and repeat after you guys got a little bit more comfortable with some of these sounds. And then I'm going to talk about open reeds, and I mentioned these earlier. I cut my teeth on open reeds. Open reeds, sometimes when you can't get that bull to move in, right here. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can get a lot, if you have a, if you have a cow, if you have a cow tag late in the season, this is, this is money right here. This is money. And the reason why I say that, because sometimes during that later season, they like to, they like to congregate with each other a little bit more, especially they, they go in from, you know, separating the bulls. The bulls go in and, and hey, friends, we got some new guys coming in. Pass them some dime frames, and then we'll, uh, we'll get whoever's uh, name that didn't get no dime, uh, decal, and then we'll get them later. Um, and then, like I said, uh, they'll, they'll mix and integrate with each other. So the cows and calves be with each other. The small young spikes be with each other. And then the older bulls will start separating each other into their bachelor groups, right? Later in the season. From my experience during this year of rifle season, I point at you because I, you know, you had a rifle tag. Um, from this year is, you know, I, I knew this all along, but I didn't know. You know, I'm always learning something in the woods, but I didn't know that I could actually call in some of these bulls during the later season, but I just had to change up techniques. So that's why I say these open reeds are, are money during that that later, you know, those rifle seasons, because you can bring in that, that cow um, that may be looking for that lost calf too as well. And then you can also locate some of those bulls during that rifle season with just a location you will and I'll give you an example later on when we're talking about uh, bull sounds. And then this goes right into where I was uh, just talking about bull sounds. We'll go into location bugles. I think if I had to pick a if I had to pick a bugle that was money, and I can only and I can only do one bugle, it'd be a location bugle. The reason why I say that is because I just want to know where he is, so I can close the distance. And then if I can close the distance, maybe I can't master that chuckle, which is the next. Maybe I can't master that chuckle, maybe I can't master anything else, but if I can master that location bugle, then I can bring him in or I can close the distance so I can get close enough to use maybe an open reed or a cow sound to bring him in close enough to shooting distance. If it's a rifle tag, I'm gonna tell you right now from my experience, especially from this year, I just wanna close the distance where I can see him. If I can see him, maybe I can shoot him. Especially with the rifles nowadays, you can reach out there. My buddy Pat, 675 yards. We located these bulls, moved in. These rifles can do it this year, I mean, this time uh, in, in era. All right, so that leads us into uh, chuckles. Um, once I master my location, people, maybe I master my chuckles. And then grunts. Grunts and chuckles are two different types of, uh, two different things, but they mean two different things at the same time. For me, when I go into a chuckle, when I go into a chuckle, and I think it'd be fair if I just demonstrate some of this stuff as I go, so so we know that what I'm talking about. And I got a bunch of different calls here, so y'all don't think I'm uh, just using one particular call. I like to use the white amp. You guys have the green amp. I don't have the green amp, so I'm gonna just use what I like to use. So, um, so when I'm talking about when I'm talking about location bugles. It's just this this is a simple location bugle. And then I cut it off and I'm listening for him. Alright? So if I said that's the best bugle and the only bugle I would use, that's the one I'm gonna use. I just wanna know where he is. But now I I, I mastered that location bugle, and then I want to go into maybe a location you go into a chuckle and the chuckle and grunts I'm gonna go back and forth but the chuckle and grunts mean two different things and I'll go into that later after we master the cow sounds. So I go into a location view but I'm gonna go into a location view into a chuckle. Sounds like this. Really choppy, fast, boom, 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 boom. And then the grunts are elongated. It's an elongated call. So it sounds like this. Did you hear the difference between? 
between that chuckle and that grunt? Okay, you mean two different things. Listen, I'm not a biologist. I'm just going to tell you what I think they are saying when they do it. So when we get into that, I'll touch base with that. But listen, I don't know exactly what they're saying. I think I do, but I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying he, he's speaking Russian and I'm, I'm speaking English and I'm looking at him and I'm looking at body language when he does it and I'm trying to interpret, interpret what he's saying, right? So the, the chuckles and grunts mean two different things, all right? And I just touched base on uh, location bugles with chuckles and then that'll be next and then location bugles with grunts. And then we'll go into uh, a lip ball, which is just a sputter of lips. And that means something totally different. All you want to do is take your lips. As you do it, I try to make it short as possible. So on that location bugle, all I'm doing is this. And you'll hear those bulls. When they're really, really mad, they'll go, they sputter your lips at you. Listen, that's an advanced call and it's super hard. I promise you, it took me years to learn that, years. And I promise you, when you leave here, you're gonna be like, I'm mind blown, I really don't know how to do that. Practice, practice, practice. I drove my wife insane when I did it. Um, so it goes back to uh, you know where I was going here. So lip balls, lip curls, and then um, barks. Listen, what do you do when they bark? I'm gonna get that question. I promise you, one of y'all gonna ask me, what happens when it barks? And then y'all like, hey, game is over. Game's not over. The bark sounds like this. Now cows, cows bark, they bark, and bulls bark. And all, it, all it's doing is alerting the herd around them. Hey, something ain't right. Something ain't right. So sometimes you'll hear this bark, it sounds like this. All they doing it is alarming the herd. Promise you, I've heard it, promise you. They barked at me before. But sometimes you can get them to bark. If they bark, what I do is I bark back because sometimes you'll call that bull in and he doesn't see you. He's sneaking in. He, he, he bugled and he sneaks in and he's looking. He might be within 100 yards and he's looking. He's like, something ain't right. So what he does is he And then he'll just sit there and look. What he's saying is, show yourself. Show yourself. Now listen, once again, I'm not a biologist, but I can tell you, just by looking at him, I can say, okay, he wants to see me. So what I do, back to him. I'm telling him, no, you show yourself, buddy. <laughs> right? So you got to look at it and interpret it. Just like that, like, I, like hey, we, we're trying to pick a fight here. We're talking about September and we'll go into uh, the rifle seasons and what I do during the rifle seasons. I really had a good time with my buddy Pat. He had a, a stellar tag in, in Unit 61, and, which is a hard tag to draw. It took him 12 years to get that tag. Well, 13, right? We got it on 13? Yep, 13. 13. So the 13th year, 12 points, right? Um, and then I was uh, really, really intrigued at could I call these bulls and would they answer during that first season or during that fourth season when we went up again uh, during the rifle season? And yes, the answer is yes, they will call. They will call. So if they're not talking right there, they may be talking the next ridge over, but they're not talking the same as they do during September. But you still can call. Okay. All right. So everybody open up your package, your, your green amp, and, and let's get familiar with, uh, with the diaphragm and Anybody turkey hunting here? Anybody turkey hunting? Any? Show of hands, who has used a diaphragm? Okay, so we got about half, right? Half, 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 not. All right? We're going to uh, cut this on here. All right, so, yeah, I just want you to cut this on and I'm going to make it up to it. All right? So, hey, listen, I'm just going to, we're going to get familiar with the diaphragm and don't, don't do it. We're going to get familiar with the diaphragm. My son's going to be connected. Oh, it's already connected. Okay. Where do you like to set your diaphragm? Front of the palate, in the middle, or in the top? I'm about to explain that right now. Let me just get hooked up here before I get too far in. And, okay, my son's got to be connected. 
who hopefully I got good enough service in. All right, I'm gonna start right there. Oh, all right, so get familiar with the diaphragm. All right, so if you flip it over, this is this is the back side. This is the front side. All right, the front side is the side that goes to the top of your mouth, your palate of your roof of your mouth. Some of us have really, really deep palates. Some of us have short palates. So at the top of your mouth, if you're looking at my hand, and this is this is front where my mouth is, this is the side, right? Some of us have really low palates. Some of us have really deep palates, right? And that deep palate, the top of your, the front, where it says amp, and on there it should be white, right? Yeah, where it says amp, that is to the top of your mouth, right? That sits to the top of your mouth. And then with what you will see is some of us have really short palates, and it's hard for us to get that lake, that tape, because this is just tape, that tape to stick to the top of your mouth. Remember, if it's not sticking and it keeps dropping, then it's not sitting, it's not sitting in your mouth right. So you have to play with it and go back and forth. But remember, don't go back too far where you start getting a gag reflex. And if you have a gag reflex, you start throwing up, right? And or if you're me and you're over exaggerating, you maybe had a couple of drinks and you swallow the diaphragm, right? I'll tell you, I'll tell you that story later. I'll tell you that story later. It's funny, but it wasn't funny. All right, and um, so the top of it sits at the top of your mouth. Now remember, if you have a really narrow or flat uh, palate, then sometimes you have to take with some scissors and trim off a quarter of an inch at a time. I'd say don't go past a quarter of an inch at a time because, because if you do go past a quarter of an inch at a time and you go past the point where it's going to stick, then you really going to have a problem and that dog going to call is no good and you have to throw it away. But what, what's really, really nice is if you do have a short palate, your teeth are really narrow in there, they do make uh, slightly smaller diaphragms that can fit in the top of your mouth. And you can see the difference between this white one and this white here. It's a, it's a big difference. <coughs> I'm going to walk around here. You guys can see that it's a big difference. And the reason being is because some of us have really, really short palates. Our teeth are really close to each other. And listen, everybody's gonna sound different. In the elk woods, it's not one elk that sounds just like another. I promise you, they have a distinctive voice. What'd you say your name was, sir? Cole. Cole. Cole's got a big, deep voice. I got a cracked up voice for being no color, right? But I promise you, in the elk woods, if he bugles, he's going to sound distinctive. He's going to sound different than, a, than, than I am, right? So when you get out there and you think you're fooled, and you think it's a dove floating, you better make sure before, before you leave that area, or you better make sure you call that one, that person, that person, or that bull in. Real quick story, and I don't want to go down rabbit holes. Real quick story, I'm going to go down plenty of them. Real quick story, I, I was taking my wife out. She's a great hunter, but this was number four, like the fourth year that she hasn't hunted elk. And it was due to she she was in school, finishing school, and then we had moved, we had went down to um, Telluride and hunted Telluride area, and then we came back and hunted some other areas. And she probably drew the tag after four years old, so on fifth year, she, she drew the tag, right? So what I will say is we went over this hill. And we nicknamed this hill Serena's Hill because my wife's name is Serena's. She killed the biggest bull in that area, right? So she gets the title of that, that area. Until somebody takes that title, she has it. So we went into Serena's Hill, we dug over this edge, and we was checking it, and I threw out a location view. I told you that's the, that's the best view we could throw out. I threw out a location view, I get three bulls to answer. One's really close, it's dark now. One's really close, one's further than that one, and then one's over here in this meadow over in this deep draw canyon. And this one bull, I said, wow, these bulls are close. So we moved me, I said, maybe to the edge of the woodland. Starts getting a little lighter. This one bull would not shut up. I said, man, that is a dude. I said, wouldn't nobody park there with us? I said, how in the world? He must have came around the other side and walked through the dark for an hour just to get back here. I said, ain't no way. I said, well, listen, baby. I said, I don't want to mess with him. We got this other one over here. We'll dive down this hill. This bull keeps coming. 
He sounded so bad. I said, this has got to be a human. I said, let's hurry up and get past him so we can get in here so he knows we got the spot, right? I know that I'll fool a lot of people, and I know that there'll be a lot of people out there in the woods that'll fool me. But what I will tell you is make sure before you leave, I'm at least now call that person in or call that bull in just to verify, right? So we get to this point where I was like, this is not a human, this is a bull. I said, he's coming. So I, I dip back, I drop my wife, I drop back probably 30, 40 yards, and I throw a location here with dad. I said, I'm over here, buddy. And then I looked up and I seen legs. He's coming. So he has two, we was in this little tree line that was in the middle. He has two areas he can come. He was right here in the middle. He can come down here or he can come over here. Either way, my wife's got a shot. So he comes to you. I was like, oh my God, this has got to be the funkiest bull I've ever heard. He comes in, he's a big six by six on one side and a big three on the other side. If I had to put, if I had to put a score on him, he was over 300 inches with just the funky side, right? So I'm watching him, I'm watching my wife. I said, dang, she didn't range anything. Maybe she's just comfortable. This bull comes in at 25 yards. She swings 45, 40 yards right over his back. I was like, what? What? You missed him? I said, he was close. I said, what you, what you range in there? So anyways, he blew his off and he leaves. The bull was probably still alive. If he, if he lasted through rifle season, he's still alive. And he is a funky, cool bull, and he has a unique sound. It goes back to what I was saying. If you were bugling in the woods, you're going to sound a little different to me. If you were cow sound, your sound's going to be a little different to me. What we're doing, we're just trying to fool them, right? Trying to fool them. So, back to what I was saying. Everybody has a different palate plate. And some of them have narrow power plates, and with that narrow power plate, maybe you gotta go with the smaller diaphragm, okay? And it's nothing against whoever has, man, everybody's mouth is different, right? So, we're gonna go into explaining this. Let me go back to where, I know I'm, a, I'm a moving a little fast because I wanna make up some time here. I got, I got caught in traffic, you sound like somebody, some other people got caught in traffic. So listen, this is the top of your diaphragm. You have a tape that goes around that's shaped in the form of a pallet, right? And then you have a metal dome here. That metal dome allows you to create the space that you need once you put it in your mouth. Once you put it in your mouth, excuse me, I gotta take a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be hoarse by the end of this. No, I'm not sponsored by Monster, but it's really good. <laughs> um, so once you once you put that, uh, once you put the diaphragm to the top of your mouth and try to seal it, this metal piece allows that just enough space where you can get it and you start working that latex, all right? You have that metal piece that's cramped in, that's holding that latex. That latex is what's going to make that sound with the air of your voice, right? <clears throat> so, on that latex, you have different pools of latex. Some are really thick and pulled tight. The thick and tighter ones, they last a little bit longer. And so now I'm going to go into what I, what I said, I, I want to master the mu sounds. And I want to pull this video up because this is Estes Park, and I, I imagine everybody has listened to Estes Park. Is this volume up? All right. Everybody's listening to Estes Park. But what I want you to do is listen to, never mind the background sound, and I'm going to roll this into about two minutes, two minutes and 30 seconds, all right? So two minutes of just visualizing what those cows sound like. Don't worry about the bull sounds yet because there's going to be some bull sounds in there. But just listen to these cows, all right? Let me play this real quick. Somebody just coming outside their house. Pretty cool, especially being in Estes Park. So right now, I want you to take that, that call that you have, and I want you to, I want you to put it in your mouth and get it, get it seated to the top of your mouth, and then when you seat it to the top of your mouth, excuse me, I'm going to use this walk plane, 
apologize for not walking down there. But I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seat it to the top of my mouth. Ooh, that's not, not good. So seat it to the top of your mouth. And it should stick to the top of your mouth. If it doesn't stick to the top of your mouth, move it back and forth until it sticks to the top of your mouth. If it doesn't stick to your top of your mouth, then maybe we need to trim that, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is how I like to start off when I'm trying to teach somebody, is all I wanna do is make some mosquito sounds. Dirk does a really good job, Dirk Durham does a really good job of demonstrating mosquito sounds. And all it's gonna sound like is this. So, 
Not saying that you can't close your mouth and call a bull in, because I promise you, you could call a, you can call a bull in with your mouth closed. It just sounds it sounds echo. It sounds like that that cow's a little further away, right? So mastering that that air pressure that's going through, and where I like to sit that call is where it seats in and sticks. Everybody's a little different. Getting back to your question, everybody's a little different. Some people are going to go back a little further. Some people are going to keep it close. Some people even put their teeth on, on the side of it, but if they put their teeth on the side of it, they have a narrow, very narrow palate plate, but it doesn't allow myself, doesn't allow me to get control of the, the diaphragm. So once you get it seated to the top of your mouth and you know it's, it's there, now we work on the mosquito sounds, and the mosquito sound is just making it sound, right? Some people are going to sound like this. You're making a sound, right? But as long as that call is stuck to the top of your mouth, then that's that's the first step. And then the next step, going back to what I said, the next step is chopping it off, raising it up a little bit. I'm putting a little bit more voice into it. Sounds like this. And all I'm doing is dropping, dropping my Jaw, as I say, dropping my jaw. So go ahead, you guys can practice. It's gonna sound like World War II again. <laughs> So this lost cat, whether it's a 
look bull or look cow, they 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 make a lot of noise and it sound like a kid. Mommy, 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 mommy. <laughs> right? That's what it reminds me of, right? They get in the woods and mommy, where you at, mommy? You'll see it, right? My wife, uh, my a few years back, my wife, I was calling this, I call this bull in, and this calf comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes by me, zooms past me, and I went like this. Watch this, babe. So I called this calf in. I hit him with a few, few cow sounds. Sound like this. <coughs> the calf turns around. Me, yeah, mommy, mm -hmm. mommy. Comes running straight to my wife. Gets really close to my wife. <laughs> so close that my wife is doing this. She's like, oh my God. I wish I had it on video. And then she had to go like this, <laughs> get back. And the calf runs off. But they come in, they make a lot of noise. But calf sound, calf sounds, they don't sound as deep. They don't sound as deep. It's just really choppy and it's short too. It sounds like this. Now that's just a calf sound. All it is is short. It's short doesn't sound as crazy. It, remember, they, they're adolescents and little little bitty old teenagers. They just, they're a year old. They don't even know anything. Their voice ain't even dropped yet. So it sounds like this again. Sounds like a baby, right? But remember, when a cow, a cow a cow sounds a little deeper. Now, she's calling to her calf, and her calf sounds like this. And then she, she talks back. So right now, all I want you to do is I want you to cut it really short. Don't make a lot of, don't put a lot of uh, air through that diaphragm, and then just chop it off a little bit. You're gonna sound like a calf. see in the city, right? So, once again, you'll see something like this. Crowd of elk, mom and calf, and they sound like this. They're just talking to each other. That's just mom and baby talking to each other, right? Mom and calf talking to each other. That's Cow and calf communication, that's all that is, okay? Now, let's move on because I don't want to get it right there and I want to cover everything before we run out of time. You guys need a break? Everybody need a break? We'll keep moving on then. All right, lost calf. You guys just heard it, I'm gonna replay this. Listen, listen to this calf. She never, I'm gonna say she, it could be she or he. They never shut up on a lost calf they never shut up. We'll play this once again so you guys can hear this. Once you get in the woods, 
that right there can be a really game changer. A cab sound can be a really game changer, especially uh, when, when you're trying to locate a bull and he is shut up and it's probably 11 o'clock and he's headed in his bed and he's shut up. And I, I'll show you, a bit, I'll, I'll play a video here in a little bit of me taking a buddy out. We were on this bull, another rabbit hole, we were on this bull and uh, the bull didn't want to, he, he wanted some, he wanted to play, but he, I, I, I think he's got his butt kicked before and he's a little timid, right? And I did everything I could to pull that bull in. The world champion out here trying to pull a bull in and didn't want to play. It happens. It happens, right? So I'm working this bull, I'm working this bull, and I said, listen, man, he shut up. I know he's in this location. Watch this. And all I do is I hit him with this lost cat. That sounds like this. And all I'm doing is I'm trying to tell him, man, where you at? I'm lost. I'm lost. Come somebody, somebody, I'm lost. That's what I'm trying to tell him. What happened? What happened? That rabbit hole, what happened? Is that bull sounded off. Now remember, he gave up his location just by that simple lost calf sound. He didn't want to really get up out of that bed or he was sitting right in that area getting ready to bed. So when we moved in, you got to know that he is looking in your location, looking from where you called. And if you move in, so he, he was probably 150 yards from us when he started off. We moved in. We should have been a little stealthy like ninjas. When we went, we went like elephants, right? Not knowing that he was a little closer than we thought. And when we got down there, he seen us, we seen him, and he left. Right? So when that happens, and you, you, you're trying to locate that bull that shut up right around 11 o'clock, and you break out that lost calf sound, and he sounds off, now it's stealthy mode. Because you probably want, you're probably not going to call that bull in. You're probably going to sneak in and catch him standing there, getting ready to bed, or bed it down. And you'll hear a difference in that sound, and I'll explain that during uh, the bull sounds. So a lost calf, and I'm gonna let y'all practice this in a minute. Lost calf, sounds just like that, that video. If you're in the woods long enough, I promise you, you'll hear that. And if you hear it, be ready, because that calf is coming. And I'm going to watch that calf come by me, and maybe that bull will swing right behind me, right? Who knows? You never know. you got to be prepared. So right now, all we're going to do is make that calf sound. So go ahead and practice that. Hey, hey, listen, remember, remember, if they don't stop on this sound. They just go nuts. They're little babies. I'm talking about mommy, where you at? All right, go ahead. Because I, I, I want to touch base on it right now, because then we'll move into uh, 
uh, bugle sounds, and then the more advanced sounds. So this estrus buzz, all it is, all it is, is a cow. She's is a cow in heat. She's ready to be bred. I've seen this personally in the woods. It took years to see this, but I've seen it twice. And they make this sound, and when they make this sound, you'll see those bulls change their behavior. They'll come over there and check that herd. Another rabbit hole, another story. I was taking my wife out, and it was one of the, the best and worst hunts ever. We wasn't expecting this snow. It was snow in September, and it was one heavy, wet snow. But it didn't start off like that. I located this herd the night before. We moved in in the morning. We didn't have no rain gear, nothing. It started off sleeping. We found this herd. We stayed on this herd. And then it turned into rain slash snow, and then it was just a heavy, wet snow. We were getting soaking wet. Anyways, we get on this herd, and this cow, she I, literally 35 yards, dovetail off that, is I looked at a lot of videos and a lot of elk sounds, and what I try to do is I try to mimic those sounds. Whether I know what they're saying or not, once again, I'm not a biologist, I don't know what they're saying, but I do know what body language sounds like. So if you got up and you aggressively started talking to me, it sounds like you want to fight, right? Right. So I aggressively start talking back to you. Same thing in the elk woods. If it's just a cow sound, she's mewing at you, I mew back, right? Um, so I, I practice a lot by mimicking those videos and those sounds. Once again, I popped in the truth, truth about uh, uh, primos, the truth about hunting, I think it's true. I, got, I had all those videos at one point. Anyways, back in the day of DVDs, they don't even have it. It's all YouTube now, it's all on your phone. Put those DVDs in, drove my wife crazy. I, I absolutely, I didn't listen to what they were doing, what the primos team was doing. I listened to the elk and what the elk were sounding like, and what they were sounding, and how they were doing it, when they were doing it. And then I mimicked those sounds, and that's how I practiced during the off season. You'll go from down here, just making mosquito sound, to up here in less than what we have, nine months? Less than nine months, right? Just by practicing those sounds. And whether you, you take those calls with you, and you practice in your vehicle going to a to B, which is work, or you do it like me and you drive your wife crazy and it sounds like World War II at the house. Especially now when I got him, the baby girl, and the wife doing it, it sounds crazy in there. It actually, I have to plug my ears and walk away. All right? But practicing those sounds and don't just judge yourself. Who cares what everybody else thinks? Because in the woods, in the woods, you can sound like da -da 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 -da. And here comes that bull, right? What other questions do we have? I see one more over here. How do you get from the mosquito to like the high pitch? So, when I'm doing a mosquito sound, all I want to do is make that sound, and then all I'm doing is adding a little bit more voice into it. So, instead of the mosquito sound, that little, little freaking Net is coming by your ear, and you're like, like, Ugh, I'm going crazy. Where's the bug spray, right? Listen, and then I add a little bit more voice into it. Sounds like this. And it's all done with air pressure. So I'm throwing more air pressure and a little bit of voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, put the pressure on your tongue. Right? Pressure on my tongue and more air. Air pressure, tongue pressure. <clears throat> Any more questions? All right, so let's move on to, come on these break, go back from breaks. Cool, let's move on to, uh, I think I had next on my list was open reads. <clears throat> open reads. I cut my teeth from the very beginning, and I told this when we started, was I was decent at the diaphragms. My finisher, my finisher, and most of my bulls when I was 2006 to 2009, 10, maybe 10. Yeah, I'll stretch it out to 10. 2006 to 2010. This was my game changer right here. I call this the finisher. So I located that bull, boom, he answers. 
Maybe I locate, you know, throw a location bugle, and boom, he's over this one. I check my wind, I move in. I wasn't very good at the diaphragms at the time, but what I was good at is an open read. And I'm gonna explain this. You'll get an open read, and it'll have a castration ring on it. Castration ring. It might be black, it might be green. If you know what a castration ring is, you can find them at Big R, and it's for farmers that are castrating some of their cattle or sheep or whatever it is, they don't want them to breed, and they put their castration ring on the testicles, right? That's all it is. But don't think of it like that. It's just a ring. It's just a, it's just a plastic ring. And that plastic ring sits here, sits on all your reeds. And what that does, it allows you to, your lips to hit a point and stop there. They call it the sweet spot. I love it when Dirk says, I moved to the sweet spot. Now, for me, I can't use the castration ring. I can, but I choose not to. And the reason being is because I like to use this whole platform as I roll into it. And when I'm calling, you'll see some people, they'll call with, the, with your, your reed down here like this. The born and raised boys, they call like this. I'm like, man, I could never call like that. But I never taught myself. I said it once again, I'm taught, self-taught. So when I use this open read, I use it with my diaphragm at the top. My diaphragm at the top, castration ring is going to be there, and that castration ring allows your lips to stop at a certain point, the sweet spot. But I use this whole diaphragm. And what we're trying to mimic is cow sounds, right? So, once again, you've got your, your, your diaphragms, and you also have your open reads. And if you're not good at the diaphragms, and you can't get them a stick, boom, money killer right here. How many people duck on here? We got more duck hunters than we got elk hunters. Listen, same thing, it's an open read. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of duck hunters have this. They have a big old uh, lane full of calls, and then if you, if you search the net, you'll probably see me back in the day with a duck lane and all these open reads on there. Like, bee, 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 bee. Sound like a whole, whole elk herd. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Money. That's what, hey, can I borrow for a second? You might go back and I promise you. If you go back, right in 2009, 10, you go back and you'll see me in a picture posing like this. <laughs> I had every open read you could possibly find. <laughs> but I was good at it. I was good at it. But I, when I walked through the woods, <laughs> I was like, dang, these things are loud. And so, but, but it was, it was, a, it was a game changer. So, Open read. All we try to do is mimic a, a, a cow sound. And listen, uh, there, there's a lot of them in the Bass Pro Shop. I don't know what brands they have. You can go down to other stores too and pick them up. But these are the EC extras. Um, my buddy Dirk Durham, he loves this one. It makes some sweet cow sounds. This is the easy extras. I usually keep both of these in my pack, especially when these bulls, they need something different. I can give them everything, but they need something different. So, all I'm doing is trying to make the cow sound. And what I, what I like to do is put it on my lips right here and move my lips forward as I go. And all I'm trying to do is say, here, here, here. Sounds like this. I promise you, you'll start off like this. That's how I was, right? That's exactly how I was when I started. And you'll, you'll find it very hard, but it's all done with lip pressure, right? Lip pressure. And all I'm doing is rolling my lips over that call. Now, once again, it's a castration ring, and you can find that sweet spot with that castration ring. But I don't need the castration ring because I use my lips and I use the whole platform. Not the whole platform, but most of the platform. And I roll my lips into it. Right? And you cut it off a little short. Now, this other, this other little one, I like it because it makes, it makes some sweet calf sounds. And the calf sounds sound like this. It's the same platform, it's just a little, little smaller. And it sounds like this. And you could 
You can muffle it with your hand as you go, or you can leave it, and then you can roll it out. And that's just mimicking different sounds throughout the woods, because remember, those sounds are hitting that, those wood lines, and they're bouncing off. Sometimes I turn around, if I see it, if I got a bull over here, sometimes I turn around and I give him this. Make it sound like he's over there, so when he comes in, he comes past me and going to that point. Or we have a caller back there doing this, and we set up closer to the bull, and we try to bring the bull in. But these are great calls when you can't master the, the diaphragm or you can't get the diaphragm to stick into you, to your mouth, use, use your, your open reeds and try to master your open reeds. And if you're a duck hunter, you're probably going to master these before you master the diaphragm anyways. If you're a turkey hunter, you're probably going to master the diaphragm before you master the open reeds. But game changer. It seals the deal, especially, especially during rifle season. Rifle season. I love these calls. Especially when those cows and calves and those little young spikes, they come together and I get them to sound off. I hit them with the little lost calf sound. Boom, mom says, boom, I know what she is. I start moving in, boom, done, tags filled. I say it like that, like it's easy, it ain't that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. All right. No breaks, no questions. Remember, you don't have to remove your castration ring on your calls. I do it. My son doesn't do it. My wife doesn't do it. They leave the castration rings. No, I, I take them off. You take them off? Okay. Well, he takes them off. It'll be like that. All right. But you don't have to remove them, but make sure that you hit that sweet spot. So sometimes you got to move that, that castration ring back or forth to get that sweet spot. And sometimes, if you, if you guys can see it, I'm putting my finger right here. Sometimes all you need is the front part of that, that diaphragm. I'm not using it like I typically use it. I'm just using it, the first part of that. And that's what that cash register ring is going to do for you, OK? Any questions about open rings? OK, we'll move on. But these guys are game changers, guys. Game changers. All right. Now, my favorite part, calling in these bulls with some bugles. I'm the bugling king. I, if you see me on, in the woods, you're going to hear a bunch of bugles. All right. So location bugle. Remember, on a location bugle, on a location bugle, all I'm doing is elongating my cow sounds. Elongating my cow sound. Remember, it goes back to the mosquito sounds. And all I'm doing is elongating it. Taking that cow sound and making it stretch it out. Stretch it out and then I'm going to drop it. So without the two, Drop it. Now remember, here's a cow sound. I'm going into the bull sound. With the two, I'm amplifying that sound. Now, at the very end of that, I try to add my voice into it. Reason being, is I want to be the biggest boy on the field. I want to be the biggest boy on the field. But the location bugle, I just make it sound like, hey, where you at? Hey, where you at? And I'm trying to ask him, if he's over another bridge, what's your location? Where you at, buddy? I want to play. And all I'm doing is elongating that cow sound.
But I will tell you on, on some of these windy days, <clears throat> on these windy days, and you're, you're, you've mastered the cow sign, you throw out a location people, and you can't hear if somebody's digging through stuff or the leaves are moving, right? You can't hear nothing. So what, what, I, what I do when I'm working with my buddies is I separate myself. Because if they go digging through their packs, I can't hear nothing. So I might come over, separate myself.
right, it's already just a little too, too. It's really light. Boom, throw it in the pack. Don't need much. I just want to, and it doesn't sound threatening. It doesn't sound really threatening. When I, when I break out this tube, sometimes I call a, a three by four or a little bitty rag or and I break this tube out, and he's like, hey, I'm not playing with that big boy. And then I break out this little tube, as threatening as deep as this, this too. But remember, back to what I was saying, is I want to elongate that cow sound and drop it off at the end. When I drop it off at the end, I'm throwing a little bit of a voice into that. Ooh. I just put it, ooh. It's coming from my diaphragm. So with the two, Just like I talked about on the open reads, they make blue tops that go on this. Um, Phelps makes a really good one. There's a new one that attaches to, it's an attachment that goes on here. And then it allows you to blow a bugle if you can't master that um, open read, I mean that uh, diaphragm. And all you do is roll your lips over the top of that blue read and then once you get that mosquito sound, then you can start mastering this. But I will tell you, this is one of the first tubes I had when I was in the elk woods. Why? Because I could not bugle with the diaphragm to save my life. Of course, I advanced up a little bit and worked on my stuff and got it perfect, right? Not perfect, worked on it. And, but I was using this. And what I did is I blew up location bugle. I blew a location bugle, and once I got him to sound off, I finished him off with an open reed. Thank you, sir. So that blue reed that's on these new uh, Phelps, Primos, uh, the Easy Bugle, there's a bunch of them out there. Those are easy to blow to get a location bugle. It's super hard for me to do a chuckle with them, but you can locate those bulls just with something as simple as that, okay? Um, elongating the cow sound. You have to elongate that cow sound and drop it off at the end in order for you to get a proper bull sound. Starts off as a mosquito sound. Then it goes into a cow sound. And once you get that cow sound done, it goes into elongated bull sound. So I don't miss anything. So, 
I say, no, I didn't want to do death by PowerPoint because I'm not sure. Did it, did, has everybody served in the military or, or served or been part of family members? Raise your hand if you part of the military. Boom, we got everybody, huh? So, y'all know death by PowerPoint. I wasn't going to do that. That's crazy, man. I want to put some hands on some stuff to get our... Get, get breezy with it, right? So let's go into to, to chuckles and, and grunts. Listen, it co it, it's going to get a little bit more advanced as you go. Practice the very beginning part. But I wanted to touch base with all these so you leave here with a base knowledge. What is my goal today? My goal is to help you cut down the learning curve. So when you get out there in the woods, during rifle season, you get them to bugle. Why do you get them to bugle? Because you sound pretty decent, right? You sound pretty decent. And it ain't because of me, it's because of the practice that you've done in eight months to get ready for September or October or November during those, those, uh, those peak, peak rifle seasons or peak archery seasons, all right? So chuckles. Usually when you hear a chuckle to me, this is just me, this is my, my opinion, I should say that before it gets put out of the way, it's my opinion that when you hear a chuckle, you bugle at him, he bugles back. It's more of a threatening kind of posture. Hey, I'm over here, buddy, right? So when you hear this in the woods, <laughs> He's telling you, come on, let's go, let's fight, let's fight. So I go out and I throw a location view. I'm going down a rabbit hole and I'm gonna show you how to do this in a minute. <laughs> I go down a rabbit hole here and I'm gonna go down a lot of them. I'm in the woods, I throw a location view. He fires back with. It's September, he's hot and ready to fight. Am I gonna probably get that during rifle season? Maybe first, first season rifle, you might get a, you might pick a fight, especially in some of those harder draw units that don't have a lot of pressure. Maybe you can pick a fight. Definitely here in September. All right, how am I doing this? All right, cow sounds. All I'm doing is chopping that cow sound. I'm chopping it, boom, boom, boom. That's all I'm doing. I'm taking my tongue, I'm hitting it, pulling it back off as I'm breathing, as I'm breathing through it. And I'm, listen, another rabbit hole. Very, be careful, guys. Safety, safety first. Safety first. I'm gonna, I told y'all, I'll tell y'all this story. I had a couple drinks, and I'm showing my wife how to chop. And I over exaggerated it. So I was telling her, breathe out, you breathe in. You breathe out, you breathe in. And lo and behold, as soon as I breathe in, boom, it goes down my throat. Now I told y'all guys, I'm trying to stick it to the top of my mouth and keep it to the top of my mouth, but sometimes it falls off. So I was in there exaggerating. And then as soon as I inhaled, boom, diaphragm goes down. I'm trying to get it up because I was the only one ahead. I wasn't even worried about it. I wasn't even worried about it going down. I was like, that's the only one I got. That's the only one. So lo and behold, uh, it went down. And then I went and got an x-ray, and they couldn't find it. But it ended up at the Walmart, Walmart tour or something. So hey, it, it came out. It came out. I'm safe from here today. But so please, stick to the top of the mouth. Don't over exaggerate it, just make it short and sweet. All right, so when I'm doing it, it's a cow sound. It sounds like this. Cow sound, but it's chopped and it's short. Doom, 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 doom. And all I'm doing is in exhaling, inhaling. Exhale, inhale. With the tube. 
And remember, when you start getting this, I start adding a little bit more voice into it. Like that old man sitting on the couch. He's like, yeah, boy. yeah, boy. yeah. Right? All right, so once again, die from my mouth, cow sound, shot. Shot the cow sound. Cow sound? I'm chopping that cow sound in the head. Parts from us. And she throws out an extra's buzz. Excuse me. She throws out an extra's buzz. And it sounds like this. So this cow, she's 30 yards from us, 30, 35 yards, and she throws out an estrus buzz. <laughs> this bull screams, <laughs> comes in. I can see the bull. My wife's on her knees. I'm like, get up, get off your knees. We can't make this shot, because it's kind of up here. So she gets up, and this bull comes in, and he checks this cow. Checks her, she's not ready. She's not receptive. She keeps moving around. She's like, nah, not yet, not yet. But she's really close. And then the bull moves off. You will see this. If you're in the woods long enough, you will see this. This estrus buzz. And all it is is I'm buzzing. <clears throat> So now we covered, we covered cow sounds, just basic cow mules, lost, I mean, uh, uh, calf mules, lost calf, and that's your basic cow sounds. If you master just one of those, I promise you, you'll be all right. You'll be all right in the woods. Now, the cow mule is something that I will work on after you leave here, just a cow mule, a basic, basic cow sound, You make that and you master that sound, I promise you, you'll be just fine. Now, when I'm in the elk woods and I want to get this sound from one basin to another, I use a tube to amplify that cow sound. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tell that bull I'm a mature cow and I'm over here chilling. What you gonna do right here? And that sounds amplified as going from one ridge to the other, whether that ridge is only like 200 yards or maybe that ridge is 600 yards away. But what I will tell you is when I'm using this tube to amplify that cow sound, it reaches out over the other side. And when it hits the other side, it sounds like this. And I'll, that sound, when that sound carries, it sounds just like that on the other side of that basin. Now, when I do use a tube, it sounds more like a mature cow. Maybe that cow is six, seven years old, we don't know. I'm not a biologist, I can't tell you exactly how old that, that cow may be. But I use, a, I use a tube, and then I might mix it up with elk and calf communications with, I mean, a, a mature cow with a calf, which sounds like this. That's a mom talking to kid, 
Sounds a little bit more amplified, a little deeper with this, and then you mix it up with a cap, a calf sound, and it sounds like a herd over there. Especially when we're in the woods and we, we're trying to get these, these bulls to, uh, to, to sound off. Maybe we know they're in there and they're just not sounding off. We hit them with some calf and calf communication, so they'll sound off. And they may be on the other side of the ridge, and that's why I use a tube to amplify that sound out there towards the other side of the ridge. So when you get into the mix of it, you can't, you got it, you mastered the cow sound, just use your, uh, your, your tube to reach out to the other side of the basin. Any questions so far as we go on, and I don't want to lose anybody. Any questions? Please, no question. No questions, hey, we'll move on. What's the best way to really tell how this is like performing? Because obviously you can't track do it during the season. But like on the off season, do you videotape yourself a lot? Because in my head it sounds terrible. Yes, like it yes. I, I give my son a lot, and especially when I'm stage performance, when I'm getting ready to get on stage, I get him to, to video me. And I did this back in the day, uh, early in. Are you only using the tube when the uh, bull's off at a distance? <laughs> or using it when it's coming in? I'm using, when I'm chuckling, I'm always using my tube. Okay. The reason why, it sounds a little bit more realistic. <laughs> if I go here, <laughs> you sound like some baby bull in the woods somewhere. <laughs> I want this boy to be intimidated. If he ain't intimidated, I want him to fight, right? And remember, it goes back to what I was saying. Usually, typically, when I hear a chuckle, it's threatening, Posture. It's a threatening posture. So real quick, the ones that have a tube, if you want to practice that, listen, chop that cow sound. The cow sound sounds like this. I'm chopping that cow sound, bringing my tongue off of it, pushing back into it. Between both of those views, right? All right. 
Let's go into grunts. Now, a, as I said before, that chuckle is a fighting posture. A grunt is elongated chuckle. Elongated chuckle. Sounds something like this. Most of the time, in my opinion, as I said before, it's going to get leaked out and they're going to bash me, right? But I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, what that bull is doing is he usually has cows with him. He usually has cows. He's tending those cows. He's in the, in the breeding sequence, right? He elongates it. He's posturing out to his women. Those cows are his women. So all I'm doing on that, that grunt is I'm doing this. It's longer. It's longer. A chuckle. Season, 
Or if you got it during the rifle season, be ready. He's curling his eyes back and he is pissed. He's coming in. He's coming in hot. All right, another thing too is make sure when you're doing this lip ball, when you're doing this lip ball, that you, this is super hard. Sometimes, sometimes you have to pull that away from you, pull the tube away from your mouth as you do it, and then the lip ball is done with the cow sound, with the buzz. And I'm gonna buzz my lips when I'm doing the cow sound. So without, without, yes, without the tube, sounds like this. If you can go with your lips and then control, all I'm doing is controlling the cow sound. So the cow sound. Now, I'm going to lift. And I blow air into it. I, I'm going to tell you, it took a very long time for me to get this. It didn't take him very long. It didn't take him very long. Hey, you want to do a lip ball? It didn't take you very long, but you know what it took? It took lots of practice. So my son's gonna do, my son's gonna do a lip ball. Go get you some bugles for a lip ball. Chop it up. I 
put voice behind it, and I blow a burst of air through it. Boom! So it sounds like this. And I'm chopping it off. Boom! So what I'm doing and what they say it is, show yourself. Or alerting the whole herd. Hey, something ain't right here. Something ain't right. Or they, they got a little bit of a molecule of human scent and they're like, hold on. And they start barking, right? Or they see movement, but they can't see, they can't smell it. And they say, mm, I don't know what that is. And then they might follow it up with a bark, and it has this weird looking sound at the very end. It sounds like this. Like a double bark, right? And they just alert the crowd and tell them exactly what is going on. Like, I don't know, man, something like right. Now, I explained this scenario early in, and I told you I'd bring it back up. I bring it back up. A lot of times when you move in and you have this this bull, he's he, he's coming, but he's he hangs up because he knows there's a little metal between you and him. He should have seen you by now. He should have seen you by now. And a lot of times, he'll bark. And when he barks, he's saying, show yourself. So what I do in that situation, I'm across this little meadow. He barks at me. I already know what he's saying. He said, I should be seeing you by now. Show yourself. You know what I do? I bark and I chuckle at him. Remember, that chuckle is the threatening posture. That's the one that's saying, let's go, buddy. Let's fight. Let's get it on, right? So he barks. Game ain't over. The game ain't over. It can, it can be close to being over, but it ain't over yet. So he barks, and I bark back. <laughs> Remember, he can't see me. I can see him. He can't see me. And then he sits there, and then he starts pacing. He starts pacing. You'll see. Him. Sometimes he'll come in, but usually in the moment that he barks, is the moment that he's facing you, and he might only be 60, 70 yards. Frontal shot. He's coming in. He comes in another five yards. He's 60 yards. If you're good with your archery equipment and you trust yourself, you can make that shot. He's clear and open. So he barks. You know what I do? I bark and I chuckle back. <laughs> he sits there, he's pacing. What does he do? He turns broadside. Boom! I got it. I got it. Because he wanted to see you, he stuck his head out at 60 yards. Maybe 55, I don't know. And then he turns broadside. As you bark and chuckle, he turns and gives you that window of opportunity. That's when you take it. Especially when you have a partner with you and your partner's the shooter and you bark and chuckle back at him. The game is not over when he barks. Everybody thinks the game's over. Game's not over. You just make sure you bark back to calm the herd down. So if that cow comes in, because she will, she comes in, she sees movement, she's coming to your car, she barks. <coughs> You just bark back. Bark back, calm them down. And maybe you bark into a bugle. Just calm the herd down. If you can get that one individual to calm down, you still have a chance. You still have a chance. Why do I give you that scenario of that barking when that bull comes in? It's because I've been there. I've been there. That bull comes in, he hangs in. 60 yards. Seen it. He barks. I bark back. I bark back with a chuckle. He turns. I shoot him at 56 yards. 56 yards. Dead. Boom. Why? Because he doesn't know. He's like, ah. Picks his head out. Turns. Boom. He's done. Right? Meet in the freezer. Meet in the freezer. 
Okay, now, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna go over one more thing uh, before we go into uh, what I was going to speak about. I pretty much covered everything on the list of all the calls that I want to, to touch base. Um, before I go any further, that bark is just a cow selling, just boom, and I chop it in. One more time. Lots of air through. Lots of air through. But 
He was with them in the herd. Now, the sounds that they make during that first, through that fourth season rifle tag, is not going to be the same sounds that you hear during, uh, during archery season. You might just hear They don't even get crazy with it. Now, during the first season, if you get into, we did, during the first season, if you get a, a late, a late cow that comes into estrus, it has sent a herd of elk going nuts. We were on some elk, lo and behold, he shot across the canyon. But I was listening as we make a decision to shoot this bull. I'm listening down. It had to be a mile and a half down in this big, big wooded area. It was some bulls going nuts down there. Three or four bulls beautiful. And I knew that probably was a hot cow that was down there. It was probably one or two cows that were down there that was hot during the first season of rifle. So the answer to your question, and then the ones that do hunt rifle, they will call back. And the magic trick to that, if you can't use a dive fire, the mobile reeds, I keep them with me. I keep them in my pack. I got my body harness. There's an open read on my bottom harness. I keep it on there just in case I need it. Especially for those cow tags that I draw. My truck, my pack, without my bugle tube and my diaphragm. Never. It was proven to me during the fourth season this year. I left my tube, my son carried his. I just carried a diaphragm because I was like, ah, oh, they ain't gonna answer. Mm -hmm. Boom, he answered. I was blown away. What I will tell you is this. You'll get those, those units that those bulls are spread the heck out. Man, cover ground as much as you can. As much as you can, because that's some thick stuff. As much as you can. And all I do is I'm light, 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 light bulls. Leave it alone. Because if they don't call much, then you don't call much. Yeah. Right? And then I might go into some lost calf sounds. Not crazy, just. <laughs> just listen and cover ground. I think that's the best key. Yeah. But, but once again, I've never hunted Washington. I just know how it is. Yeah. Super thick. thick. It's hard to walk through that stuff. Firms bigger than you. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah. if they're calling light, they're very light callers, you call light. And I'm looking, I'm looking as much as possible for fresh shine. Yep. If I'm in fresh shine, I'm probably going to be within the elk. And they may not sound off, but I just hit them with light stuff. Light views. I'm over here, buddy, where you at? And then you might get a light response. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best key I can give you. Who knows, because I've never been there, but that's how I would hunt it. Yeah. Cover ground, light calls, if they don't call back, I'm looking for scat, I'm on the, I'm on the trails, I'm with the elk. Fresh rub, whatever I can look for, to know that I'm with the elk, mm -hmm. and, and very light on the calls. <clears throat> You're here. You got a fresh and, fresh and round and all out there? Oh man, I'm a fool out there. I'm a fool out there. I got a good film of it. We're gonna we'll get it up on YouTube. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a fool, I'm a fool out this there. This man was all over the place. I'm like, a fool out there. I, I give you I give you a, a, a story real quick. I got I got two good friends that hung with me from North Carolina that I went to school with. One used to wrestle with me in high school, and then uh, the other one used to play baseball. But we all grew together. One's a year in front of us, but. They come out of Colorado. They've been coming out of Colorado for five years now. <clears throat> They've been fortunate enough to kill three elk within the five years with me. So we were on this bull just last, just, just this last year, and I got my one buddy tagged out already, and I got another buddy who has three more days with me because I had to leave and then come back. So we get in this situation where, boom, we work these hills and tear these hills apart, and we can't get, we can't muster a bugle. Next thing you know. I get one to answer. We move in. I let them move up front, patting me or back, and I'm cutting the fool. He's, he is mad and fired up. I'm mad and fired up. Yeah, just do it all to him. So I'm back there busting brush. 
Remember, I'm doing all this so he don't see me. My shooter's out front. My shooter's out front. All right, so this bull, it was this little, I said, it ain't an avalanche shoot, but it's really steep shoot, and it has a bunch of like bear brush in it, right? But these elk cut through that stuff, and it's usually a little water that runs through those little, little draws, and it's green. It's probably the greenest part of the mountain. So we're on one side, the bull's on the other. They wave me over since this bull ain't coming. So we cut across. And I don't really like to cut across because we're gonna be visible on the other side. So we get over the other side. I got my shooter with me. And as soon as I turn my hand past this tree, this bull. Oh, oh smokes, it's right there. He's <laughs> right there. Literally, he's 40 yards. He yells. I said, oh my God. I look in there, he's a huge five by five. Huge, he's big five by five. A shooter any day. The wind's blowing up, he's directly in front of me raking this tree. <laughs> Remember when you're raking trees, they can't see. Cause they ain't dumb. As they rake that tree, they close their eyes. Mm, mm, mm. He's, he's in it, he's in it. So I'm telling my partner, so listen, go straight at it. When he picks his head up, freeze. If he had listened to me, if he had listened to me, he would have killed this bull. So this bull is raking his tree. Boom, boom, boom. He's broadside raking his tree. I tell him to sneak in, and as he's raking his tree, all he's got to do is sneak in. He picks his head up, he freeze. I'm making noise back there, so he's focused on me, not you. Then he sneaks in a little more as his bull rakes. Boom, he shoots him at 20 yards. But instead, <laughs> instead, my buddy goes, well, it's experience in the woods, right? Knowing, knowing what to do with it at the same time. But all you got to do is listen to me, right? But he, he didn't even venture off of me. It's OK. Live and learn. The wind's blowing like this. The bull's straight in front of us. I tell you to go straight, you go straight. Instead, he goes left. Mm -hmm. Starts sneaking down here. What happens? Wait. Boom! The bull's raking the tree. It stops. I said, oh my God, it's done. Mm -hmm. Bull's gone. One little molecule of scent. Remember, we've been out there for eight, 10 days. We smell like goats. <laughs> so this bull was gone. But if he had listened to me, he would have he got that bull. Answer your question, I am a fool out there, especially when that bull's fired up. Oh, and I'm not shooting? Oh, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'm thrashing. I take, I take the biggest stick I can. I'm thrashing, breaking this tree, trying to sound like another bull. And at the same time, I, I might throw some tones in here to sound like this. He fires back. As soon as he fires back, I cut him off. Every time. I'm telling him, come on, buddy. Let's go. And all you need is when that split moment comes for him to show that vitals. Boom. The shooter's got it. I am a fool out here, man. Question? So uh, it seems with a lot of the stories you've told us, you're doing a lot of um, kind of stalking. Would you, do you recommend staying away from like tree stands or tree standing or? With no, I am not against tree stands at all. I just got ADHD. <laughs> I am crazy out there, man. I cover some ground. I'm not against sitting in tree stands. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. One year we hauled in three tree stands. Mm -hmm. Three tree stands. <clears throat> that was fun. No, that was not fun. <laughs> We carried in, I think, two double stands, which is the big ladder stands. They were, they were a mile and a half in. Those stands are like 110 pounds. We had carts, we was dragging men on these water holes. I am not against sitting on water holes. I'm just impatient, and I won't ask you now. So, we set them up on the water holes. Quick story. This water hole I found some years back, it's a big old, like dug up 
root ball that the tree fell, and it is huge and it holds water in there. It only holds water from September to October. So if it rains a lot during the rainy season, which is usually that July or May, March, June, July, whatever, and the snow melts in there and it rains and it just stays in that puddle. And then usually the area around it is really green. Dude, that area is littered with oak. I've had tree, uh, trail cameras in there, littered with oak. I sat in there, I was wore out. I said, man, I'm going to the tree stand. I sat in there. It took, I didn't take my bugle to I knew I was going to go crazy if I did. I was going to get down off that stand and chase me. So I'm sitting in this tree stand and I'm cold and I'm freezing. Mm. I don't know what it is about tree standing, man. If I'm not moving, I will freeze. Probably got 4% body fat. That's probably one of the reasons. So anyways, <clears throat> I'm sitting there. Bulls piping off. And I can hear <laughs> big herd coming in. Here, behind me. I don't know why I did This little five point comes up with two caps. Boom, they stop. They said, oh snap, they smelled me. But I'm up 20, 20 foot maybe. They, I see them. I got a window up too to shoot them. But they smell me, so they kind of go off, but they don't go crazy. I said, man, you better stand up, because this big boy's coming. He's coming, I can hear him. So I said, I got everything ready. I'm freezing like this, and uh, I look down, this bull's in, huge, huge six by six. So I'm like this, he come in, I draw, it's an opportunity right here, it's a 10 yard shot. I draw, just like this, he comes in, he comes in, sweeps around, he comes straight to the water hole. I don't know why I didn't position my feet. It just happened. I'm mad at myself. I swing in, anchor in, right here, I got this bull, look at my feet. That is not right. You don't shoot like this. So I swing in, this bull was 360 plus, it's huge. Swing in, and as soon as I let it go, I'm gonna let it go. Good, my feet, my feet playing. I didn't adjust my feet, I missed that bull at 10 yards. 10 yards shot. I don't admit that much, because I can shoot. But I missed a 10 yard shot on a big bull on a tree stand. No, I'm not against tree stands. I just got ADHD. I got to cover some ground. So if you're a little more patient, tree stands can. Absolutely. I set, I set up some tree stands when I know that these elk are in this particular area. And we may have a partner or two that's up with us that are just wore out. They just, they've been, they've been dogged out, right? So I, I was point them in there and put them in a tree stand while we cover the ground. And 90% of the time when they sit in that tree stand and they're patient, they're seeing elk. Especially if I got an area where, they, <clears throat> where they've been coming in and out. Any questions? Any other questions? Go ahead. So you don't do a lot of calling while you're sitting in a blind for a tree stand? Mm-mm. No calling. Listen, if we're sitting on the wallow, big water hole, whatever the case may be, where they wallow, you start cow calling, what are they going to do? They're going to come in there and start looking. Now what I do do, what I do, very subtle, very subtle, as I'm sitting there, I'll sit there and I might throw a location view out once. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Sit there for a little bit. Hour goes by. I might throw out another location view, but I do not get heavy on the calls. Because they're going to come in and they're going to start looking. Because they heard you making all these new sounds and all these cat sounds, and they heard you, so they're going to start coming in looking. I might throw an occasional location view, let them know, hey, I'm over here in the water hole. I'm over here in the water hole, and that's it. Do not make any other sounds, because if you do, they're coming in, they're looking. New Mexico, New Mexico's got some great elk hunting. It's hot as bejesus during September. There's a lot of water, a lot of water holes, and a lot of elk killed off water holes. But they don't make a sound when they're sitting on those water holes. They just let them come in naturally. 
Why? Because these fools are thirsty. Occasionally, location of people, if I'm sitting there all day, which is super hard for me, if I'm sitting there all day, location you every now and then. Midday, midday on some of those water holes can be deadly because it's, you know, it can be high 80s, low, maybe low 70s, it's super hot. And those bulls coming in thirsty, as quiet as possible, let them act the natural, come in and do what they gotta do. Especially on those wallows where they hit those wallows a lot. Questions? I got full of my answers, I got answers now. Alright. Well listen, hey, I appreciate you guys coming in. Thanks again. Hopefully you guys learned something. Take it from the basics. Cow sounds. Elongate the cow sounds into a, a location bugle. And you guys will be just fine up here. Remember, every bull, every bull, and every cow sounds a little different. Gave y'all an example. The Doug Flutie bull. And I knew that was personal. I just knew it. Told my wife. Uh, it ended up being a bull. So make sure before you, before you go anywhere else, you call them in. Call that bull in first. Because everybody's going to sound different. So if you think that you don't sound that good, it's okay. Go out there. Try it. And you'll be surprised that you'll, you'll call them an elk. They're not super hard to call in. It's those herd bulls that are hard to call in. But you got to get in there and challenge those bulls. Any other questions? Thanks again, guys. Hey, if you got questions, I'm free. I'll stay here for the next 30 minutes or so. All right? Thanks again, guys. Thank you. game calls for uh, hooking you guys up, getting you this class. Uh, like you said, the entire class is all practice. You got the call sound. By the, end, by the time the season starts, maybe you'll be uh, competing with Jermaine over here at Rocky Mountain Health Foundation. But before you guys go, we want to get a picture with y'all. So if everybody wants to move to this right-hand side, or your left-hand side, we want to get a picture with the man.